Hello everybody and welcome back. So in this video, we're going to be talking about threading. So it's actually the introduction to this threading in Python tutorial series. In this video, I will warn you, we're not actually going to be doing any coding. We're just going to be talking about the theory. So what is a thread? How do we run threads? What's the difference between threads and processes and really understanding why we even need to use these things. So I'm just going to warn you, if you don't understand that, please don't skip forward to the next video because there's no point in learning threading unless you understand what the heck it actually is. So I'm going to hop onto the whiteboard now and we'll get started and talk about what is a thread, what is threading and why do we use it? Okay. So what I've drawn on the screen right now is kind of a classic processor in 2020. We have four cores, which are all these red boxes here that I'm kind of drawing on. And then the actual black box that's denoted by CPU is the entire central processing unit. So back in the old days, we used to have processors that just had one processing core. Now we have processors with four cores, eight cores, two cores, 16 cores, 32 cores, and it goes pretty crazy, right? So computing has expanded a ton. Now, the reason I'm starting with this is because we actually need to understand how our processor works to understand what a thread is and why we have, you know, thousands of them and why we create them in our programs. So the idea here is that the amount of cores you have on your processor is the amount of things that can happen at the exact same time. Yes, that's what I mean. If we're talking about actual time, you know, like theory of relativity, whatever you want to put it at, if we have four cores, that means at any point in time, we can do at most four operations at the exact same time. And these operations are really low level computational operations. There's, you know, millions of them happening a second, but in these tiny nanoseconds that it takes to do an operation, we can only do four of them at the same time because we have four cores. And this is called parallelism. If we have multiple things happening at the exact same time, then that is a parallel operation, right? We can think about like if we have four roads and we have four cars driving on these roads, right? Moving around at the same time, they're driving parallel to each other at the same time. Whereas if I have, you know, a bunch of cars beside each other on the same road or a bunch of cars behind each other, they can only go as fast as the car in front of them, right? Or they need to wait for the car in front of them to get off the road before they can start driving on it, right? And that's kind of the idea. So we'll use some examples like this to make things more clear, but just understand that the amount of cores in your processor really matters, right? And when we think about clock speed, so if we have something like 2.6 gigahertz is the clock speed of your processor, what that means is each one of your cores can run at 2.6 gigahertz. So each one of those cores is able to do 2.6, I think it's like million um, operations per second or you know something along those lines. I don't know what the conversion rate is. And that means you can do 2.6 times four operations per second because each one of these cores is running at that clock speed. And the clock speed is essentially uh, kind of an electron or a wire going on and off, on and off, on and off. And that allows your computer to do operations. So that's kind of the background here. We have central processing units. Those central processing units are made up of cores. The amount of cores you have denotes the amount of parallel operations that can happen at the same time. Now, obviously we know that we're doing more than four operations, right? You know, like in our computer, we're going to do more than four operations. So how do we do all of these operations and how do we schedule when they happen? Well, that's where we talk about threads and we talk about multiprocessing. So a thread is essentially one program or one set of operations that needs to happen. So every thread is going to be assigned to one core. So all of these cores that we have here will have a bunch of different threads that they're going to be executing and switching between which ones they perform operations on. So if we say that like this line, actually I'm going to draw another color so that this is a little bit better. Let's say this blue line is a thread and this other blue line is a thread and our processor or our processor core can only do one thing at a time. And it has both these threads that it's assigned to. What that means is that it needs to find a way where it can do some operations on this thread and then it can switch right and do some operations on this thread. And this is what threading is. It's essentially how do we determine when to run different things on the same CPU core? Yes, we can have threads running on different cores. Obviously, you know, this core itself is going to have its own threads that are running on it. This core will have its own threads, but threading does not involve running on multiple cores. All it involves is creating some program or some operation, some function, something that's going to be executing in a different sequence than another thing. 
So if we have two threads, you know, then we can draw these two lines here that say, okay, we have these two different things. They both need to happen. Now we tell our CPU, you know, figure out which one we're going to do and what's happening on our computer. And we can actually look at the amount of threads and I'll do that on here to show you guys. If we go to task manager and we go to performance, we should see that we have 1854 threads running and you can see that at the bottom and 173 different processes. So what that means is that between the four cores on my computer, you can see it's running at a little bit under uh, 4.2 gigahertz. We can run at most four threads at once because we have four cores and all those other threads are just being switched between on the CPU core. So all these different operations are happening, you know, milliseconds after each other. And this is the idea behind threading is that we're not necessarily doing things in parallel at the same time. We're just changing the order in which we do specific operations. So why would we even want to do that? What's the point of making multiple threads if we can't do things at the same time? Well, sometimes a thread does what's called hanging or it stops or it doesn't need to actually be executing at the current time. So our processor core can kind of turn around and execute another thread while this one say is waiting, right? So while one thread's waiting for something to happen, maybe the user to press a key, maybe for, you know, some network thing to send a file, we don't need to be just stuck waiting for this thread. Our processor core can kind of change gears. It can shift to the left and it can execute another thread while that one's waiting. So this is the point with threading, and this is called concurrent programming, not when we're doing things in parallel at the exact same time, but when we're doing things in different timing sequences. So we can have multiple threads running at the same time. And our one CPU core that we're running this, these threads on is switching between these threads in its execution chain, right? So I'm going to erase this and we're going to go down to a one core model now, because this is kind of showing you how the entire CPU works as a whole, right? There's all these threads that get distributed between the cores and then they run on those cores. These cores can only do one thing at a time. There's four of them. That means we can do four things at a time in total. So these cores will switch what they're going to be doing based on the threads that they have. So let's do a one core model now. So I'm going to just draw one CPU core now and show you kind of the difference between what happens if we run something in one thread versus running it in say two or three and why we would even do that. So let's say we just have a basic Python application and we want to print one. We want to time dot sleep, say 10 seconds, right? So we'll just put 10 seconds. This is just pseudocode. Don't really worry about the syntax too much. And then we want to print the value two. Now, if we were running this in one thread, so let's draw our CPU. Let's make this like orange red box. This will be our, our core. So let's write this is a core and we'll put our one thread. So we'll say this like here. Well, let's just put, you know, maybe a label for this. We'll say that's like T1. So thread one and this will be thread one. So for us to run this program, and to see the output of one and see the output of two, this is going to take us a little bit over 10 seconds, right? Because we need to print one, then we need to wait for 10 seconds, and then we need to print two. So we can imagine it's not going to take much longer than 10 seconds, but a tiny bit more, it's going to take longer than that, right? So for us to get that output it takes 10 seconds. Now, if I distribute this into two threads, where what I do is in thread one, I leave what I have there. But in thread two, so in T2 like this, and we'll do a little bit better here, we'll print the value of two. If I do this and now I throw my T2 over here going in my core, so both these threads are running on the same core, which means, again, only one thing can happen at a time. What we can do now is say, OK, so we'll print um, one because we're going to start at thread one in our program. But then when we hit this sleep, so let's just say one's outputted here. We don't actually need to wait for this entire sleep to happen. What we can do is we can say, okay, so since this thread isn't doing anything right now, the core doesn't have any operations to perform. We're not adding, we're not subtracting. We're just merely waiting. I don't need to just stall and hang on this thread. In fact, what I can do is almost think of it like rotate the core over or, you know, pass another thread to the core. We can go over to thread two and just print the value two immediately. Because the thing is, if thread one is sleeping, we don't need to wait for it. We can just go to another thread, do something there. And then once this thread finishes executing or finishes sleeping or waiting, we can go back to it and we can execute the rest. Say, so we had like print three under here, the output from our program with these two threads would be one, we would sleep. So we would go to thread two, we'd finish thread two, we'd go back to thread one, we'd wait for it to finish sleeping, and then we'd output the value three. 
And this is the idea, right? And threads are really useful in web applications or when you're doing like online games and stuff, because you don't want to pause the entire screen while you wait to receive like a few megabytes of data from the server. In fact, what you want to do is have all of the things that are like server related commands running in a thread so that while you're waiting for the server to return a response to you, your whole game doesn't just freeze. You can have these threads so that it is going in between these two different threads. So, you know, one thread is handling getting the messages and stuff from the server and the other thread is handling actually displaying the graphics to you as a user. Say you're playing a video game, right? So then as soon as the thread from the server is ready to receive and ready to start working, okay, it'll switch to that. It'll get the information and then it can translate that to the graphics thread, which will start out, um, what do you call it? displaying to the screen or like updating the screen, right? So that's the idea with these threads. Now, a lot of applications are multi-processed, which means it's a little bit more complicated to do. They have their threads running on different CPU cores at the same time, but we're not going to get into that for this tutorial because that's a little bit more complicated and advanced. Just understand that if we're waiting for something to happen in one thread, we will switch to the other thread or the other threads because there may be many, execute those as much as we can, and then go back to the original thread when it stops waiting. So that's the idea. That's my explanation of threads and processes. And I hope with that you guys have a good understanding and are ready to move on to programming and getting into threads in Python in the next video.